You're all very welcome to Chagas Kildalton College for the AgriAware Farm Walk and Talk. We've taken a series of short videos from around the campus here in Kildalton, which we hope you'll find beneficial in your studies. These will be available at chagas.ie. Best of luck in your studies and your future careers. Welcome to AgriAware's annual Farm Walk and Talk event. We have teamed up with Chagas in Kildalton to bring to life some of the key practices and concepts of Irish agriculture. Through these videos, we hope that you will gain some insights into how a real farm works. We'd like to thank Chagask and all of our key sponsors for help in putting together these videos. Hello, my name is Aidan Nugent. I'm the Dairy Technician here in Kildalton College. In this video, my colleague Martin Woods and myself are going to talk to you about silage, what it is, how it's made, silage quality tests and silage feed requirements for livestock. Grass is the most common, sustainable and cheapest feed available for Irish livestock farmers. By maximising grass in the diet and from getting high utilisation from grass and grass silage, Irish farmers can become more sustainable and help in the conservation of the environment. So firstly, what exactly is silage? Silage is grass that is preserved for winter feeding. The same can also be done for other forage crops like maize or whole crop. The preservation process of silage occurs when the grass is packed and sealed to create an environment without oxygen. By doing this, lactic acid is produced by the bacteria from the sugars in grass. The acid prevents microorganisms from rotting the grass. This process will only work when the air is excluded. This is known as anaerobic conditions. Higher animal performances and farm savings will occur by following best practice advice when making silage. In Ireland, silage making is generally broken up into two big cuts, first cut and second cut. It is also common for a farmer to bale surplus grass throughout the summer grazing period. For first cut, fields are closed off from livestock in early April and nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium from both organic and inorganic fertilisers are applied. This will be at least six weeks before the grass is cut to ensure good yield and that all the nitrogen is removed from the grass. Too much nitrogen will have a negative effect on the preservation process. The earlier the cutting date, the higher the digestibility will generally be. This will result in the higher intake of silage by livestock. Dry weather is required for quality silage making. Grass is cut from mid-May onwards using a conditioner mower. As well as cutting the grass, the conditioner mower bruises the plant, helping to release the sugars in the grass. Cutting in the afternoon will result in the highest availability of grass sugars from the grass. Grass should be allowed wilt to remove excess water from the crop and to increase the sugar concentration in the grass. Wilting the grass is done by spreading the grass evenly across the field, allowing the air and sun to dry it. The grass is then ranked up with a rake and then collected and chopped using a silage harvester or wagon. The grass is brought to the yard and is put into a pit. When building the pit, the grass is rolled continuously to remove any air to ensure anaerobic conditions for fermentation occurs. Once this is complete, the pit is then sealed tightly with layers of polythene plastic to ensure good preservation. The same process occurs for bale silage. The bale comes out of the baler tightly packed and is then wrapped with many layers of plastic using a wrapper. Many farmers will repeat this and make a second cut of silage in early July. It is important to budget and ensure that there is enough winter feed for the livestock on the farm. It is best practice for a farmer to test silage quality. By doing this, the farmer can create a winter feed program to ensure livestock perform to their best ability. An animal will generally eat 2% of its body weight in dry matter per day. So for example, an animal behind me weighing 450 kilos will require 9 kg of dry matter each day. I now want to explain to you about the importance of silage quality on animal production. The table on your screen shows a study done in Tagus Grange about the quality of silage in dry matter digestibility and how it affects intake per animal and daily live weight gain. It shows that the higher quality silage will result in the animal being able to intake more silage per day. 
It also shows that additional live weight gain will also be achieved compared to feeding silage of a lesser quality. Making higher quality silage is more sustainable by reducing waste and utilisation of your feed. It also increases farm profit by increased animal performance. As silage is a much cheaper form of winter feed than concentrates, it's important that it's of high quality. One way of testing for quality is by visual assessment. So here I'm going to show you how any farmer at a silage face pit can analyse uh, silage visually. So we're going to look at colour and smell, dry matter percentage, pH, DMD percentage. So colour and smell is the first parameter we can do. So here I have uh, two samples. The first sample here, uh, it's a good sample. It's a nice green uh, yellow colour, which indicates good preservation. And when I smell it, uh, it is a nice uh, sweet smell, which also indicates uh, good preservation. The second sample I have here is a dark colour, okay, which indicates poor preservation. And when I smell it, it's a rotten smell, because it is rotten. Uh, maybe air got into the pit, so it's indi an indicator of poor poorly preserved silage. Our second test we can do is looking at dry matter. Dry matter is everything excluding water and it's the proportion of silage that the livestock actually eat. For example, 100 kg of fresh silage at 20% dry matter is equivalent to 20 kg of dry matter. It's measured in percentage terms and a target dry matter for good quality silage is in the range of 20 to 30%. So to measure the dry matter content of silage you can take a sample in your hands and squeeze it and with increase in pressure. And if no juice comes out, then it's approximately 25% dry matter. So no juice came out there, so that's approximately 25% dry matter. So basically if juice flows freely, the dry matter is approximately 15%. If it drips, it's approximately 20%. And if it's difficult to squeeze out, it's approximately 25% plus. Knowing the dry matter percentage of your fodder will give you an idea of how long it should last. The higher the dry matter percentage, the higher the dry matter content, so more available for your livestock. So a third test we can do is the pH. The pH of silage is a measure of how acidic it is. When grass has been cut for silage, it usually has a pH of 6. When the crop has been brought into the silage pit, one of the aims is to lower the pH to 3.8 to 4.2 for the lactic acid bacteria that preserve silage. If the pH is too high, you'll have poor preservation. So the pH of silage gives a good indication of how well it has been preserved. A quick and convenient method to measure the pH is with the use of litmus paper. So to measure the pH, you can take a sample of silage and squeeze some juice into a bowl. Then you can use litmus paper, like I have here, and there's a color coded system in place. So you dip the litmus paper into the juice until it's fully immersed into the juice. Yes, chill a bit. and then after a few seconds lift it up and then you look at the unprinted area and compare the colour uh, with the colour code and we can see here that the uh, pH is uh, 3.8 and that's what you want uh, somewhere between 3.8 and 4.2 So the next test we can do is the DMD percentage This refers to the dry matter digestibility i.e. how digestible the dry matter is The more digestible the dry matter is, the better the quality of silage should aim for a DMD of 70%. Once the DMD drops below 70%, you will have to supplement your fodder with meal feeding, or else animal performance will suffer. So the first question to ask, when was the silage cut, and then how recent was it receded? This will give you a good idea of the DMD you would expect. Silage cut in late May, in good conditions, will have a higher DMD than silage cut in late June or early July. Also, silage cut from fields recently receded will have a higher DMD than silage cut from fields that have not been receded in many years. So to estimate the DMD of your silage, you take a sample in your hand, and this sample here is mainly 70% leaf and 30% stem. So it indicates a DMD of about 72%. The higher the leaf content, the more digestible the silage will be, and therefore the higher intake of this silage by your livestock, and the better performance of your livestock. Then this sample here is from a bale of haylage, and when I take this in my hand, uh, a very prickly feel in my palm. This has about 60% stem, 
and about 40% leaf, so that indicates a DMD of 62%. So to summarize, you can do four simple tests at the pit face. Color and smell, dry matter percentage, pH, and DMD percentage. By looking at the proportion of leaf and stem, you can analyze your silage quality this year and decide on a suitable feeding regime for your livestock. <laughs>